Hi, so, uh, so my name's Phil, and I work at Smarkets. And I suspect by now you've probably seen our name and logo uh, over quite a lot of things. And it's my pleasure to introduce us to you, explain what we do, why we're here as a sponsor, and uh, why Python is so very important to us. So to get straight into it, Smarkets is at heart an event trading exchange, which means that people use our systems to buy the outcome or sell the outcome of events. For the most part, this is probably best, most well known for sports betting. So if, for example, a lot of people get entertainment out of betting on their favorite team to win or betting against their friend's team to win, so there's a lot of that that goes on. Uh, but for us, we have quite a bit of interest in something called prediction markets. And a prediction market is a, is a bit of a misnomer because it often really doesn't predict anything, which I'll get into in a minute. But the idea is that you can create a market uh, for an event that's of interest to you, people will trade on the outcome of that event, and you can see how they're trading to predict what that event will do. And I'm going to get into that in just a second, explain a bit more. But uh, for those of you who actually want to know what Smarkets looks like, if you come in as a customer and use the site, it's like on the right. You'll use our website or the apps, and uh, you can see you can buy or sell contracts uh, in an event. Or we have a trading API, and quite a lot of people trade through our site in an automated fashion. So coming back to prediction markets, so one of the questions you might ask, or I would ask here as a topical question, is if uh, Scotland has an independence referendum before the year 2020, will they vote to be independent? And we have a market on this on our site, and that market predicts that it's slightly more likely that they will vote to be independent at this time, it's 55%. So this is a kind of idea of a prediction market. And of course, if you think this is wrong, you can go trade on this now and you'll make money. So <laughs> that's a kind of notion for it. It has some utility, of course, beyond this, like it's, if there's a general election, for example, and you know that one party's coming in and they're gonna raise taxes, you may wanna come to our exchange and kind of hedge off that cost, which is another idea of doing it. So when I've told people about this, they've, they've often asked, well, how predictive is it? Did you get the Brexit results right? Did you get the Trump results right? And uh, I'm afraid to say we didn't, but all our markets predicted that Brexit wouldn't happen and Trump wouldn't get elected. But I think in comparison to the polls, our markets showed that there was a lot more uncertainty in the outcome. It wasn't as clear cut as the polls had. So I think there's some real value in these markets existing. So that's the main part of markets. Markets is an event exchange. We also have a division that's a market maker or a, a trader. So this division called Hansen trades on Smarkets and various other exchanges. And if you imagine what they're trying to do, they're trying to always set the right price for the, the event and the outcomes. So in this, this graph, which uh, hopefully is quite interesting, is a game between Tottenham and Crystal Palace. And you can see from the start, sadly for the Crystal Palace supporters, it's not likely that they're gonna win it. And, but it starts very likely that Tottenham's gonna win. As the game goes on, uh, this decays as you get towards the end and there's no score, the draw becomes more likely. And then a goal is scored and you can see it switched around quite a bit and now in the run up to the end of the match, it's very likely that Tottenham will win. And for all of this, like uh, what the trading entity is doing is pricing these markets and trying to make sure the true probability of the, the event is, is, is close to where they're pricing it or within the bid and ask spread for those of you who know financial terms. So those are the two divisions, really, of Smarkets. And uh, it probably would help a bit if I told you where we sit in the marketplace. So for the sports betting, uh, especially in exchange uh, market, there's, there's four competitors, really. The biggest one is Betfair, who I suspect you're more likely to have heard of. There's us, there's Matchbook, and there's BetDAC. And together, we're, we're probably the UK market in betting exchanges. We're the second biggest at the moment, and we're taking Betfair's uh, market share, which is great for us. <laughs> uh, in addition, uh, like I said, these, these prediction markets are very interesting to us. There's a company in the US called Predictit that just focuses solely on these. There's a few others based around cryptocurrencies and the blockchain. We also see their, them as our competition and us being in that marketplace. And we think at the moment we have better liquidity, so our markets are more predictive, if you will. So that's us as a kind of commercial company. Uh, I'm gonna quickly tell, us, tell you a bit about what we're like as a company to work for. So this is one of my colleagues, Tim, sitting in his desk uh, in our London office, which is very close to Tower Bridge. So it makes for a nice picture to kind of demonstrate where we are. 
Uh, we're about 100 people now, but one of the really nice things about us is we're very diverse. These are all the little dots showing where our colleagues come from. We have about 28 nationalities, I think, at the moment, although I think it's a bit higher. And we have an office in LA, in London, and a uh, operations office in Malta. We think, and uh, our employees, our, my colleagues seem to think we've got a very nice culture. And uh, so this is, I've just taken this from Glassdoor, which is quite nice. I've, one of the things I think that everyone seems to like is the foosball tables, which is why we went to sponsor the foosball tables as well downstairs. So uh, a lot of my colleagues would probably be very happy to play you at that game if you want to ask them. Uh, so that's us as a kind of company. Have a very quick kind of introduction just to let you know who we are. Uh, I sh I'm going to say now why we're here. And of course, we're here as the Keystone sponsor. And uh, there's lots of reasons to do this, lots of business reasons. But for me personally, the, the real aim of being here and being the Keystone sponsor is to support uh, the community, to give back to the community and kind of try and join the community really. We have, we've reached the stage now where we can start contributing to open source a lot more and we want to start doing this and we want to be kind of known. I'll come to that later on. So what we've done here is we've uh, brought along an escape room that's proved very popular. I suspect a lot of you, before I, we've explained it, probably thought we did escape rooms because uh, it's the main thing that people have asked about. I'm, I'm sad to say there's no slots left, but you can try and convince an existing team that you can join them tomorrow. So yet another reason why you might want to make friends at this conference. Uh, I should say as well that we're hiring, of course, uh, like many of the companies. We think we've got a very nice interview process. We don't like to make people wait. We try and make it very quick. We try and make it very pleasant. And we've been interviewing here. If you're interested, please come to talk to me or my colleagues. It'd be fantastic to hire some more people. Okay, so probably the bit you're really interested in though is why we care about Smart uh, by Python and why we're here in, in that regard. And it, in some respects, it's a bit of a tautology for me because Python is kind of the heart of Smart Kits. We're, we're over two thirds of our code base is Python. And our other languages are JavaScript, which is the front end, and C++ and Erlang, which we build the very latency critical systems. So I'm gonna, gonna go through some things that uh, we've done in Python we think are interesting. I can only really skirt the surface of them because I don't have enough time. But if you're interested in any of these details, please come talk to me and my colleagues and I can go into more. So the first thing is, like I suspect most people here, you've gotta go through the Python 2 to Python 3 transition. And uh, we did this some time ago, and I think we learned quite a bit. If you'd like to, if you're going through it yourself, I can hopefully give you some good advice. We restarted in 2015, we completed the year after in 2016, and now, uh, these past couple of weeks, we're actually moving from 3.6 to 3.7. So we're, we're quite happy with that, and uh, hopefully I'll never have to write Python 2 again. Uh, in the ads that we put out, I included this bit of code. And I tried to include this bit of code to kind of give a few examples of the things we're really interested in at the moment to kind of spark some, some comments. So a lot of my colleagues are very keen on us moving to 3.7 just so we can use data classes. And I know there was a talk earlier today about it, so hopefully the rest of you have all seen how good this is. But this is one of the, the big keys for us for moving so quickly. In addition, a few years ago, we decided that all our code should be type hinted. And for about the last two years now, we've been type hinting every line of code we've added. Uh, so there's only one bit here, which is the JSON response part that really d demonstrates that. We've been doing that for quite some time. So I think we've got a lot of knowledge of how to do this in practice. We gave some talks at the PyCon UK a couple of years ago, if you want to look it up, or again, come ask me. And the final thing we've been getting into very recently, because uh, we have a lot of web microservices, is async IO based systems. And there was a talk I'll come to in a minute, but this is something we were really trying to push. And so that was the last bit I was trying to get across in this little snippet. So I can't really go into details, sorry, but uh, some of my colleagues have in talks I'll reference in a second, but if you'd like to ask me, please do. Okay, so we gave some talks. We started with a workshop on Tuesday, which explained and led people through building an actual sports trading bot that traded on markets. And I think a number of you actually got to the stage where your bots were trading on markets. Uh, I don't know how many of you made money or <laughs> how it worked, but it definitely uh, got to that stage. And all the code and the talks are obviously available, and you can go take a look. Yesterday, we gave a talk on ETL pipelines. Uh, particularly for us is the accounting pipeline, 
because uh, we're a fintech company and we get audited a lot. So the upgrades and what we did to that pipeline made a big difference to us. And Isabel explained how we did it. We also spoke yesterday about how we're starting to introduce AsyncAO into production. And at this conference, it seems very topical. So hopefully that was a very interesting talk to those who saw it. And then today, uh, we spoke about how to keep Master always green using one of our open source projects called MargeBot. And it, it's the open source projects that I want to finish on. I, going back to why we're here, trying to contribute back to the community, we're trying to do this for open source as well. So we have two projects that we maintain as a company. One is called Flakate Strict, which is a very opinionated linter. So for those of you who like linting, this one takes it a bit further, and uh, there's a blog post that explains it. Like I said a second ago, there's MargeBot, which you can also uh, go and use and see that talk. And I should say all of these and the details of them are available on our blog, which is smarkishq.com. The final thing I should say uh, that we've been doing is we funded, this is David McCliver on the right, and he's the author of the Hypothesis Framework, which I think a lot of you really enjoy using for testing. And we funded him to do two projects on Hypothesis, and we think that went very well. So it's something we'll probably look at doing again in the future. So if you think you've got an interesting open source project and you want to come talk to me about possible funding uh, ideas, then please do. So that's how we're trying to get back. And uh, hopefully now you know why we're here, who markets are, and uh, what we're up to. So I'd like to thank the organizers for letting me explain ourselves to you. We're not a very big company, so I think it was quite important. And thank you for the rest of you for listening. <laughs>